What's up everybody? This is Josh Robinson with Joystick Gamer and welcome back to the channel where in this video we are going to be breaking down Halo Infinite multiplayer. First things first, I do want to congratulate 343 Industries for hitting that 20 million player mark. That is a huge feat and deserves to be celebrated. Hitting that 20 million mark is truly impressive considering how far they've come. In E3 of 2020, they released their first gameplay and boy did people give it a hard time. It looked so bad that even they were comparing it to Halo 3 screenshots. And shortly after that release, they did announce that they were going to push the game back a full year to help get better graphics and better gameplay into it. They ended up hitting up the team from Coalition who are responsible for the Gears of War franchises. They're very well known for making great graphically looking games and they were the first persons that they called up. 343 then went quiet for about a year and no one really knew much about it and the anticipation and nervousness about it was starting to build because of what was coming in E3 of 2021. When E3 of 2021 hit, the reaction was amazing. People loved it and people really liked to see that they made the changes that people were worried about and that the game was looking better than ever. The hype was back leading into the release date that was scheduled to be in December, and they ended up releasing some flights early on to help get people excited for multiplayer and also stress test the game. This multiplayer core felt so good, and I loved playing some of the flights and seeing where this game was going. The flights felt amazing, the combat felt more true to Halo than it ever had in the past, and I was so excited and ready for December to drop. After about two months of playing this game, I can confidently say one thing. What the f Now, before you go thinking I'm here just to trash Halo Infinite, I want it to be known that this criticism comes from a place of love. At the game's core, it's an amazing game with stunning visuals, responsive controls, and was the first time it felt like a true Halo game in a very long time. As someone who has played Halo since 2001, I've seen the good, the bad, and definitely the ugly, and want nothing more than to see this game succeed. The gaming industry is a healthier place when Halo and the Master Chief are at the top of their game. It is why all of this becomes even more frustrating because it feels like 3 Four, three shot themselves in the foot and can't stay out of their own way. Let's kick off the frustration train with what I personally think is the biggest head scratcher of them all, and that is the offensively low amount of maps and playlists. The game launched with 10 maps, which doesn't sound bad until you break it down. Four of those maps are large scale maps for big team battle, which for me is a mode that I don't touch because it's just a rat race for who gets to vehicles first. So that leaves us with only six maps to play with no idea when more maps are coming. I don't understand how a developer can release 20 multiplayer maps in Halo 5 and then the very next game have half of that. I don't care if they port over iconic maps from past Halo games because the game mechanics in Infinite feel so good that it would be amazing to play Infinite on iconic maps like Midship, Lockout, and Ascension. Not only is the game dying to have more maps to play, but my sanity is also dying with the lack of playlists this game offers. At launch, they didn't even have a Team Slayer playlist and claimed it was because they wanted fewer playlists to stress test their servers. I find this very ironic because Team Slayer is hands down the most popular playlist of any multiplayer game and would be a great way to, I don't know, stress test your game? They added Slayer a couple weeks after the launch, but what makes it so frustrating is that they have only one ranked mode. The reason why this is so frustrating Frustrating is because when you play social playlists, you get matched up with anybody, so you can have lobbies mixed with stupidly good players and players who have never played Halo. It leads to a lot of games having the outcome of either getting rolled or rolling the other team. With ranked, the more you play, you get an MMR score or a multiplayer matchmaking rank, which allows you to get paired with players a little closer to your personal skill gap, which leads to more competitive games. Halo Infinite only has ranked arena, which is a randomized playlist of Team Slayer, Capture the Flag, Strongholds, and Odd ball. You basically have to cross your fingers and hope that you get the game mode that you're wanting to play, but there's a very real chance that you can play an hour of ranked arena and never get a Team Slayer game. It blows my mind that they do not have, at the very least, a ranked Slayer playlist, because what happens is these players queue up for ranked arena, but treat each mode like Team Slayer because all they want to do is frag out. You end up losing because half your team is playing Slayer while the other team is running your flag back to their base. To further add insult to injury, 343 had to pull CTS 
ETF from the map Behemoth because the spawning spots were so broken. To give a little perspective on how limited the ranked playlists are in Halo Infinite, Halo 5 had ranked Arena, SWAT, Slayer, Free For All, Elimination, 2v2, and Duo Arena. Halo Infinite just has ranked Arena. Please, for the love of God 343, give us more maps and playlists. Next up on the list of lovely things that could have been avoided, we call up to the stage the issue with desync. Desync is where the server doesn't register exactly where you are on the map. This translates to you being behind a wall, but the server thinks you're standing out in the open. So on your screen, you're standing behind cover, but on your opponent's screen, you're squatted out in the middle of nowhere, and the next thing you know, you're seeing the respawn timer on your screen when you thought you were safe. To give you all a better visual of what that can look like, check out the link in the description to see a side-by-side -side visual of desync. This has led to a ton of games where I'm shooting an enemy in the chest and none of the bullets register because the player is actually three meters to my right, but on my screen, he's right in front of me. You cannot be a competitive shooter with esports tournaments and have desync issues like this. What's mostly concerning is that there's no word on when it's getting fixed other than a statement that they're looking into it. If the lack of maps and playlists wasn't enough, this issue quickly becomes the straw that broke the camel's back. These glaring issues are going to be what causes players to fall out of love with this game, and it's so unfortunate because at at its core, the game is fantastic, but 343 finds a way to make you hate it. These mistakes are fixable and aren't rooted in the foundation of this game, but the longer they take to address these issues, the more difficult it becomes to win those lost players back. The last part of criticism that this game deserves is the convoluted battle pass and customization system. 343 sold us the idea that the battle pass will never expire, thus giving you the ability to complete the battle pass at your own pace. They also said that you'll unlock battle pass levels through challenges. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, the challenges will likely be get a double kill or eliminate 10 Spartans. But when this game was released, they created challenges that were so borderline gatekeeping. Most challenges were so specific that it felt like they were forcing you to play Halo in very niche ways. For example, get 10 shotgun kills in Fiesta. So you're telling me if I want to level up my battle pass, I not only have to find a specific gun within a game, but also be able to complete the challenge playing a specific game mode? I've never played a game where the progression system is forcing you to play certain game modes to unlock items. Nothing about their progression system is performance based, so you can have a 20 and 3 game, but since you played on Team Slayer and not on Fiesta, guess what? No XP towards your progression. Why did this game become about completing point objectives versus rewarding you for winning and playing well in a match. There is absolutely nothing rewarding about losing three games in a row, playing a game mode you don't want to play, all for 250 experience points. It takes a thousand experience points to level up one rank, so you can see how that can make you want to pull your hair out and stop playing. Also add to the fact that they do limited time events with new gear, but you can only unlock the new gear by playing a limited time game mode. So once again, I swear, they're like writing jokes for themselves. If you want the cool new gear, you have to play a game mode that they're forcing you to play instead of just letting you unlock them across any playlist. Oh, and the game mode that you're forced to play? That will be gone too once the time event expires. So if you loved the game mode, haha, <laughs> too bad. I would honestly be okay with the progression system if they simply didn't force you to play certain game modes to unlock lock them. I don't care if I have to eliminate 10 Spartans to complete a challenge, but please don't make me do it on big team battle. Lastly is the lack of customization options for your characters. You have the option of three different armor sets, with each set having their own unlockables. The kicker is that you cannot mix and match these item sets, so there's a very real chance that you'll be unlocking armor items for a gear set that you don't want to use. Isn't that fun? Overall, this game is one of the best shooter experiences at its core, but once again, 343 Industries cannot get out of their own way. They dropped the ball with launching a Master Chief Collection, Halo 5, and now Infinite's multiplayer. This is a game that I want to love so bad and have been playing it this long because the gameplay is that good. However, I often find myself ending my session short because of these issues I listed above. The fact that the gameplay keeps me coming back even with these frustrations gives me hope. But for now, Halo Infinite is going on the shelf until they fix desync and add more maps and playlists. I plan on checking into this game every month or so to see what improvements they make, and I promise you, 
I will scream from the mountaintops when it is time to hop back into this game. Until then, there's plenty of other games to play that won't cause unexpected hair loss. Thank you so much for watching this review of Halo Infinite's multiplayer. Are you as disappointed as I am with how 343 has handled the launch so far? Sound off in the comments and let me know what you think. February is going to be a huge month for gaming, so don't be afraid to tap that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the exciting games coming out soon. This has been Josh Robinson with Joystick Gamer. Thank you again, and as always, stay gaming out there.